Hello and welcome, my friends. My name is Faye, and this is where I sit down with my friend Adam to talk about, well, spooky stuff. So let me ask you, do you believe in ghosts, hauntings, paranormal shenanigans? I don't, but I love hearing about all of it, and honestly, I would love to be wrong. My friend Adam, he does, and he has a lifetime of experiences to back it up. So buckle up, because today we're talking about the Winchester Mystery House. It's mysterious! And a house. From 1881 until her own death in 1922, the heiress Sarah Winchester lived alone. So tell me why did she insist on ever-present construction that transformed her farmhouse as initial just eight bedrooms into a sprawling 160-room mansion that spanned over 24,000 square feet? Complete with doors and sterols that led doors, to nowhere. You say. <laughs> Shut up. It had doors. <laughs> this house had doors. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm gonna need you to take the door behind you and get out of my house. Okay, okay. But here's something it says that it's an eight room mansion, right? Eight rooms, that's huge for one person. But it's modest. Not for the people of San Francisco, San Jose area. Ah, yes, San Jose. Um, Okay, but I have the the facts here. Are you ready? I'm going to lay them on you, but Christmas style. Christmas style? Yes. So um, it was 24,000 square feet with 10,000 windows, 2,000 doors, 160 rooms, 50. 52 skylights, 47 stairways and fireplaces, 17 chimneys, 13 bathrooms, 6 kitchens, and with a price tag of $5 million. That was so beautiful. Are you moved beyond words? Yeah. Um, so $5 million to do, which would be $71 million today. Seventy-one million dollars. That's a that's a that's a that's a lot. That's a big old house. Lots of money. That's a lot of money. This and, woman had a lot of money. And she did this all just for herself. Nobody else lived with her. No. Well, unless you count the thousands of angry spirits that were constantly on her heels. Okay, but why, if she built this house fresh from scratch, right? Why? What? What would cause all of these spirits to be there? Well, I'll tell you why. Because. In 1862, Sarah married William Wirt to Winchester. Wirt? Wirt. Oh, Wirt. W-I-R-T. I-R-T. Okay, that's better. Who was the heir of the Winchester Repeating Arms Company, which, as you know, the Winchester Rifle, it's it's the most well-known rifle in America. Billy the Kid used it. I mean, if he used it, it's good Mm -hmm. enough for anybody. John Wayne used it for True Grit, the movie. Yeah. The American public, they were stunned when, in July of 1876, um, the defeat of George Armstrong Custer at Little Bighorn River on the Montana Territory. Almost 270 troops were killed in this battle. And many reports indicated that the firepower advantage provided by the Indians' Winchester repeating rifles was the reason for their victory in this battle. And it's also... What brings us to our story today and why Sarah Winchester felt the need to build this this mansion that we're speaking of. It's important to note as well that um, Sarah had a baby with her husband William, baby Annie, and she died as an infant. And many say that, you know, Mary Winchester never recovered from this. And 15 years later, her husband also died of tuberculosis so she she kind of just was a very she was very sad woman after these these two hard blows in her life i mean that'll do it to you and it was at that point that sarah started getting into speaking with mediums Mm. and uh, one particular medium told her that the winchester family had been struck by a terrible curse and and if we were to go back a lot there were a lot of tragedies that befell the winchester family and this medium told sarah that the spirits killed by the winchester rifle 
was was hunting her family down and causing all of these these horrible tragedies. Yikes. So their spirits were seeking vengeance and the only way to appease them was to build a house for them. The ghosts had another request that the house should never be completed. So at this point Sarah she moves over to San Jose, California to start a new life and that is where she finds her house, her eight bedroom farmhouse. And she is tasked with turning it into a sanctuary for the spirits of those lost due to this rifle. That's an interesting thing to have it be like very rich woman, right? And she just becomes a recluse and goes to build a house for ghosts. Have you met many rich people, Faye? Because they do some crazy stuff. And so I feel like she's no different than many rich people I've met. No. The answer is no. Yeah. Trust me. (sighs) Rich people problems. Okay. But so how often do you think psychics are like, hey, go build a house? Um, probably all the time. Have you ever seen the dead files on the travel channel? Also no. Every episode, the psychic's like, y'all need to leave this place and never come back. So, and you need to build a new house or you're going to die. Okay. So, I mean, this has been going on. People have been listening to mediums forever. Um, probably shouldn't. They probably shouldn't take life advice from psychic mediums. But Miss Winchester did. So, like I said, she went to the Santa Clara Valley and built a home for herself and her ghosts. She, um, this, uh, this says it was a six-bedroom farmhouse. Maybe it was eight. I, I mean. I've read Eight. Eight, six, who knows. But it was on 162 acres in California. That's a lot of real estate to have in California. It's kind of cute, though. Instead of, like, a crazy cat lady, she's, like, a crazy ghost lady. She's a crazy ghost. That's what I would be. That's what I am. I love it. Sarah Winchester, she was her own architect in this. Um, But she claims the ghosts were also part of... um, The architect team that helped her build this house. Of course. Yeah, each night, Sarah Winchester, she would retreat to her seance room because, you know, at the turn of the century or around the turn of the century, a lot of people had seance rooms. Yeah. It was a big thing. So she would go into her seance room and she would receive instruction from spirits on how to progress the house. And so the next morning, she'd present her construction workers with hand-drawn sketches. And they'd be like... This room needs a door. Yeah. And if you've ever seen the Winchester house, I mean, you look up at the front, there's a door that just opens and drops down, you know, two stories down to your death if you Cute. were to open it. And so the the theory that many people believe was she wanted to confuse the spirits so that they could never get her. And I also heard that Sarah Winchester would like sleep in different rooms at night so that she mm-hmm. was never in the same spot. Bob and weave kind because of because she was truly scared of these spirits in her home. And so she's so, trying to appease them, but she's also trying to like stay one step ahead of them, make the house bigger so they have further to look for her. Yeah, and and she didn't care what she built as long as she heard the hammers going nonstop, mm. twenty four hours a day. Didn't you say something about like an earthquake? Also, well, yes, the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. I think that was the biggest earthquake uh, San Francisco's ever seen. It killed everybody in the town, and it also caused Miss Winchester's house to be severely damaged. In fact, she was caught in the earthquake and stuck in her bedroom. Yikes! But her staff had to dig her out of the room because the entrance was blocked off by rubble, and so Sarah was terrified. She thought it was the spirits that had caused this this disaster at the house, is what people say. I don't know how much I believe, but I'm just telling y'all a story. So she ordered the construction workers to tear down the top three floors of the house, because if you see older photos of this house, it was... So amazing looking. Now, it's it's still quite a sight to see, I'm sure, but it's nothing like it was before the earthquake. So she ordered the workers to seal up 30 unfinished rooms. Whoa. And then she made everyone continue building outward instead of upward. 
Um, and she did that until she passed away in 1922. So it used to be like cool and stacked up. Oh, it was neat. Yes. And then it. It reminded it. me of almost like the Hotel Del Coronado in spots. Like it was just a beautiful, fantastical looking building. Cool. And now it's just kind of, I mean, it's a cool house, but it's nothing like it looked. Yeah. Back in so the that day. makes sense that there would be some doorways that maybe, or like a room that instead of finishing it they would just well it's interesting that she would put a door instead of just like a plain wall well because of the earthquake i think there are parts of this house with like doors that go to nowhere i think they used to go to somewhere yeah. but then when they just fell down in the earthquake they just left parts of the house i think that that's part of the reason but i also think she had some some emotional baggage going on things going on so i was reading first of all this is time magazine has said that this house is one of the top 10 most haunted houses in america numerous times it's always up there in numbers and guests who go there and employees talk about real life paranormal experiences all the time so they say that there are generally speaking there are three different kinds of hauntings so they call them intelligent hauntings, residual hauntings, and shadow figures. Yeah, intelligent hauntings are when the spirits are interacting with you. Uh, residual is just like a record that plays over yeah. and over again. It's almost like the imprint of a memory. And then you've got shadow figures. Um, shadow figures, many people in the field still don't know what they truly are. But I've seen a shadow figure. It look it's exactly what it sounds like. A shadowy it's figure. It's a shadow. Do you see them in person or is it the, do they only show up in photographs? Because I know I've seen... Oh, yeah. Yeah. So sometimes you see them in person and they're there and then they're gone. Kind of a... Yeah. I, um, I've seen shadow figures um, in many, many haunted places over my life. And people think shadow figures, I don't know, I've heard some weird theories. I'm trying to think of the coolest one I heard. I remember someone told me that a shadow figure, people always, there's this connotation with them being evil when mm -hmm. people see them. But then someone else told me once that it's like when people talk about how when you walk down a tunnel of light as you die, you go towards the light mm -hmm. and they see their loved ones, but they're usually you know, backlit, and so that's the shadow figure you're seeing. It's mm -hmm. like a person that's standing... Not necessarily ominous, just bad lighting. Bad lighting. <laughs> bad lighting can make anybody look bad. Even an angel. Even an angel. Who knows what they are. But yeah, those uh, those types of hauntings are, are things that have been seen at the Winchester house. Yeah, by a lot of people. So a couple of them... Um, they'll have people who experience things, like you said, the residual hauntings. Well, they're, they'll have a moment from the past basically replayed over and over again, which is what you said. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times they'll have an experience in the grand ballroom or the chili basement where there's this famous... They make chili in the basement? No, it's a cold. Delicious. A chili basement. Mm. <laughs> now I want to build a chili basement. Where's the cornbread basement? Does it go with it? Right next door. Yum. And the honey butter hallway connects Listen, them. Listen, okay, I work alone. Okay, cool it, Barbara. What? <laughs> you heard me. Back to my story. So the residual haunting that is experienced most is involves the wheelbarrow ghost. Ooh. So it's this person who's working on the fireplace. So people will see this um, ghost pushing a wheelbarrow, and it's usually full of um, ash or coal. Uh, they call him Clyde. Clyde. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine just your afterlife is you have to just work? Pushing a wheelbarrow for eternity? Oh, that sounds exhausting. Okay, so here's a question for you. In a residual haunting, do you think it's an actual 
ghost or do you think it's some kind of imprint that doesn't actually have like is that spirit really there or is it oh, just uh, no with the residual i don't think that because i'm the expert on the afterlife i don't mm-hmm. think that it's i don't think that it's something that's happening i think it's just the energy of something because think of like theaters that are haunted and people see shows and and actors redoing their roles on stage. I think it's just the energy of things yeah. that just kept going on repeatedly. I just think I might have just... I blocked out when you said residual. Oh, no. You're great. I blocked me out, too. Oops. You're fine. But no, I think, right, for this guy, I'm glad that he's not actually there. But I do think, right, there are some ghosts who just do the same things all the time. Yeah, that sounds rough. So then intelligent hauntings, they have... Um, a lot of these where the spirits attempting to interact with the living world. So a lot of the time it's just like gentle tugs on shirts or skirts during tours because they do offer tours there now. Um, there's also a longtime maintenance worker who reports that one day after entering the water tower, he heard the pitter patter of foot steps above him and so he went up because he was like nobody's supposed to be here so he knew it had to be a trespasser because they get those a lot right in haunted place so he went up to the three-story he went up knowing that the three-story structure was off limits but the footprints were just always ahead of him and it didn't matter how far he went his search he got all the way up to the roof following the sounds of these footprints and there was nobody there Mm. So that's kind of a fun one. And then the most common one that people see are the shadow figures. So people just see the shadowy human-shaped manifestations. And a lot of people talk about this as like, do you actually see it? Are your eyes playing tricks on you? Kind of a thing. Do you have an experience where you've seen a shadow figure but weren't? Like, what's that like? When I see a shadow figure, it's usually out of the corner of my eye. And there's a whole thing we could go into about why people see spirits at the corner of their eyes because the way that our um, eyes are engineered, the wavelengths of light that we see on the sides of our eyes, they're able to see more... I am not... Shadows? Sorry, I'm not a doctor of life. but okay. But there's a scientific reason behind um, the way our eyes are built. That we see more on the sides. And that's why people say, oh, I saw a ghost on the corner of my eye. Because you're able to see more from the sides. Um, Maybe it has something to also do with why we get our vitamin D from um, the sun going into the sides of our eyes and not looking straight at it. Interesting. I just, I don't know what that has to do with anything, but it's a thing. It's a thing. Thank Um, you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I find that to be quite fascinating. So shadow figures, they'll find them um, roaming around corners, down long hallways, and appearing in windows. Uh, Mm. There also is a former marketing director employed by the house who captured a photo in 2015 that caught what looks like a human-shaped apparition looking out at the front gardens. So Mm. it's supposed to be a pretty famous one. Maybe check it out. But... uh, They just kind of wonder, like, is it a reflection of clouds? I feel like a lot of those photos can be really hard to tell. You actually took probably my very favorite photo that shows, like, a body in it at at the the Stanley Stanley Hotel. I loved that one so much. It was so creepy. That is a creepy, That's that photo still creeps me out when I think of it. Check out Adam's Paranormal Polynesian YouTube channel and go to the Stanley Hotel episode and you'll see this photo of them looking in this mirror and there's Ooh. something there that should not be, but very much is. And I love it. Yeah, and a lot of photos I see that people show me of spirits... Especially in windows, it gets tricky because a lot of the times it's just the way the reflection is. And I don't believe a lot of photos that people show me as being paranormal. But I think at the Winchester house, I think there have been a few really good ones taken. Like you had said. 
Yeah. And then have we we haven't talked about Sarah Winchester's obsession with the number thirteen? Have no, we? No, not yet. Um. So many of the windows in this house they have thirteen panes. Several of the stairways have thirteen steps, and many of the ceilings have thirteen panels. There's thirteen lights in the chandelier. In one of her favorite rooms, there's uh, also 13 bathrooms. In the 13th bathroom, there are 13 stairs that lead up to it, and there are 13 windows found inside. Um, If that's not odd enough, Sarah Winchester, uh, she had her will divided into 13 parts and signed 13 times. Crazy. Um, There there was a carriage uh, entrance hall. Um, It's divided into 13 sections. There are 13 rails by the skylight, which is found on the floor of the South Conservatory. And there are 13 squares on each side of the elevator in the seance room. Uh, 13 hooks for the 13 robes Sarah wore while contacting the spirits. I don't believe all this, but I think I think she did like the number 13, though. 13 happens to be my favorite number. Yeah, it's a good number. It's a great I, number. Um... But I can see there being some ties to it. I do think that's probably an excessive. Yeah, I think that's a little much. But oh, speaking of windows, I don't know if you've seen photos of her stained glass windows in the house. They're so beautiful. There's um, there's this one ballroom I think, and the windows are stained glass, but they're spider webs, and there's spiders Ooh. in the webs, and they're beautiful jeweled glass. And it's just when the sun comes through or the light comes through, it is absolutely stunning. That sounds really I mean, cool. If if any reason to if there was any reason to see this house, it would be just for the the sheer craftsmanship that yeah. went into it. It makes me sad to think of all of the hard work that people put into it that was ultimately just taken down. I know that people said, right, some people have said that she did a lot of this to keep members of the community in jobs, that she was just trying to make work for those in the community. Yeah. And I don't think that's, I think that sounds like kind of a dumb reason for someone who's super rich to be doing that. I feel like your mm-hmm. philanthropic desires could be fulfilled with something that didn't mean people's work was being destroyed because I feel like that's, you know, counterproductive and kind of maybe insulting for the person who's doing all that work just to have it destroyed. Well, I think when you have that kind of money, you can afford to have a tantrum here or there where you cut a wing off of your house. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Like, um, I don't know. The house is just, it's a mystery. <laughs> that's the name. A... Oh, one other thing. I just remembered, speaking of names, have you ever heard of the story Stephen King wrote called Rose Red? No. It's a really good haunted house um, novel that is loosely based on the Winchester Mystery House. So those of you who know the book Rose Red, now you know there's a little connection there. He went to Winchester and became inspired. They actually almost filmed the, the TV miniseries in the Winchester House, but instead... Filmed it in Tacoma, Washington at Thornbridge Castle, which, funny enough, my brother almost got married at during the pandemic. Hey. But then the pandemic happened, which I'm, I was, uh, was very jealous to hear that he was almost going to get married at the Rose Red House, because that's a whole other, other thing. Yeah. Okay. So you were mentioning a story, though, of something that happens to some guests who come through... The Winchester house when they're doing, is it during tours? There was a story of a woman who came in for the tour. And back in the 90s and 80s and stuff, I think they gave tours that were a lot more, um, there was a lot more access to places than now. I think now you can't really go into a lot of the rooms. But this woman, I remember hearing something about her once she got towards the kitchen. She completely lost all of her vision and went blind. And she had to find her way out of the house because back then, I guess, you could just tour by yourself. Just walk. And there have been handfuls of stories of people saying they lose their vision when they go into this house. Does it come back? It's just like... Yeah, I mean, it comes back. Small amount of time. 
I don't know. This this Winchester Mystery House has been a place that has uh, been a dream as as a kid to see. But as I get older, and the more that I see some of these TV shows that have come in to the Winchester House, I don't know if I think it's that haunted. I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm supposed to be the one that's not the skeptic. But on well, the okay. Winchester Mystery House, I have to say, I think it's got a really cool story. But I don't. I've not seen enough evidence of ghosts and hauntings at this house for me to say. I don't know if I think it's haunted. I mean, I'm sure it's haunted. I'm sure there's something going on, but it's not to the extent that these people. I mean, it's just. I mean, I think that even the the house itself or getting some stories out there so that we'll go check it out i mean which is smart you gotta keep your bills paid yeah i think a lot of haunted places come up with some really good stories for sure for biz i think honestly though one of the reasons that i like believe you when you tell stories is because you are willing to say like i think this is bs sometimes because there are definitely people out there just to make a buck and they're telling these things and saying stuff that isn't true or making it sound bigger than it is. And I've always appreciated that you were willing to point those things out and not just take everything as absolutely it's paranormal. Well, I appreciate you turning all of the um, features in the house into a Christmas song earlier. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. you appreciating me for that. I appreciate you appreciating me, appreciating you, appreciating me. So again, the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. I think if you love architecture, if you love a Victorian mansion, which I do, uh, it's still on my bucket list of places to visit, and I will visit it someday. Yeah. And I think that if you want to go for that reason, go check it out. I don't think this house is the most haunted house in America. I've been to some haunted places. and I mean, but I haven't been. So maybe okay. if I go, I'll change my mind. I don't think I will. Check it out and I maybe th- you'll see a ghost. Well, the, the Winchester Mystery House, they do some really cool tours like on Friday the 13th and during uh, Halloween. And I think they even have tours where you can just go in with a flashlight, which that sounds fun. Ooh, that does sound and fun. Spooky. If I had the chance now, if I had the chance to investigate this house, like do an actual real investigation, you bet your butt I'll be there. But until then, I'm going to have to say this. No, I don't know. What do you think, Faye, about the Winchester Mystery House? Do you believe it's haunted? Or do you believe it's just a part of our American folklore that people love to speak of and think back romantically on about? (laughs) What? (laughs) What? Waxing philosophical (laughs) at the beginning and the end here. I believe... That the Winchester rifle killed a lot of people. Sure did. I believe that this woman probably had felt some guilt about that. Right? And I believe the children of future. Teach them well. Let them lead the way. I think that the house is really cool. And I think 100% that it... or not to leave that as the podcast the number one podcast in my mind (laughs) that has to do with the paranormal so do us a favor child leave us a four or five star review again i don't know which one's the highest i don't care enough to look (laughs) because we've only got 18 people listening to this right now (laughs) okay well maybe by the time you're listening to it we have about 30 viewers viewers Can you see our voices? We're done. Thanks for coming. And remember, tell your friends about us. Look for our YouTube channel, our Facebook. Do you have a Facebook? (laughs) It's under, to believe or not to believe, that is the podcast. It's Adam here signing off. And Faye, I don't know what Faye's doing. Say bye, Faye. Bye. Bye.